think we're live. Welcome to everyone tuning in with me live. My name is Chris. And of course, we're here with artist palette Durham region. And we're going to be painting and drawing Halloween butts. Can you believe that this is the 12th installment of the butts series number 12. We've had so many butts in the past. It started with safari butts. Um, woodland butts. We've had beach butts. We've had all kinds of zoo animals. Um, just so many butts, like frosty butts and Easter butts and so many. Halloween butts is next. I think this is only the second one of the butt series that's been in watercolor. We did a Canada Day uh, Canadian butts in watercolor before. Now we're doing Halloween butts. How many butts can you count in this painting? One, two, three, four, five, six. If you count like this pumpkin as having a butt. And how many times will I say the word butt during this live feed? A lot, a lot. Welcome to Lynn Ann. Hello. Uh, Jessica has a question. Yes. Uh, you could do this in acrylics. You could follow along um, with pencil crayons, pastels, gouache, um, literally anything you want. Maybe a digital version would be cool as well in uh, some kind of program like Procreate or something like that. Digital version would be cool. But yes, acrylic would be just fine. Uh, Twizzler Girl says that they love the butt series. Thank you. And Jared is ready. Excellent. I'm ready too. Let's go over some of the supplies that you can kind of see on the screen here. And keep in mind, this is, this is a live feed, but you are able to press pause and even rewind too. So if you need to run and grab something or take a break, you are able to hit pause and leave and come back. So supplies, it is going to be watercolor. So I did grab my pad of watercolor paper. Um, I use this brand a lot, Canson XL. I always say it's a medium quality for a medium price. That is what I always say about that. I use it a lot, so I'll use that. You could potentially do this on like a canvas or drawing paper if you're planning on doing like a, a dry medium like colored pencils. I have some pens. So we're going to draw in pen um, and then fill it in with the watercolor, sort of like we're making our own coloring page and then filling it in. Um, so here's just some examples of pens that would work. It has to be a waterproof pen for this to work. Otherwise, it's going to be smudge city. Um, so here are, these are very popular, Pigma Micron pens. Those are pretty popular. Those are waterproof. Um, I like the Sharpie brand a lot. They of course make the Sharpie markers we all know and love, but they also make different pen styles. Sharpie brand, those are waterproof, those are permanent. Um, I got these on Amazon. Amazon Basics has their own line of, of products, knockoffs if you will. They make a ultra fine point pen. So I'll use one of those today. Oh, here's some more. I got so many pens. These are also waterproof. Le Pen, technical drawing pens. Those are, those are good too. Those are waterproof. Just some examples. Um, we have a few paint brushes here. I just grabbed kind of like a big, medium and small paintbrush. You could do this whole painting with just one paintbrush. If that's literally all you have, you could totally do this with one paintbrush. I just grabbed some, like the big one will help fill in big areas, right? The small one, finer little areas. I have some watercolors, um, just a little travel set uh, by Mei Liang on Amazon. I use uh, that brand a lot, nice and colorful and a little compact little set, love it. Do some mixing in the lid or on a palette. That's good there. What else do I have on camera here? I've got an eraser and a pencil. We're gonna sketch this freehand 
everyone's going to sketch their own. So everyone's is going to be a little bit different from mine. Even mine is going to be different from mine. And I want yours to be not a carbon copy. I want to see your style, your personality, because it's your art. Some other things I've got on screen here, some water and a paper towel for my watercolors. Optional things that I have available, um, a white paint pen or white acrylic to give us those um, bubbles, like the cauldron is bubbling, um, optional. You don't have to add that. Or maybe you have something different, maybe um, some white gouache or maybe a whiteout pen. You could use that. So that's optional. Um, oh, I have a plate. I'm going to use the plate to trace the circle of the cauldron in the background. But if you don't have a plate or anything round nearby that you could trace, you could just, you know, wing it. Just make a, a circle for the cauldron as best you can. You don't need to. Or if you have a compass, the tool that makes a circle. And oh, one more optional thing um, to get that nice, crisp white border. I grabbed a little bit of masking tape, or you could use maybe washi tape or painter's tape to get that crisp white border, optional. You could have um, your painting go right to the very edge of your paper, or your edge could be more organic, kind of wiggly, squiggly, organic shape edge. So that's the supplies I have. Um, of course, hit pause and go grab anything that you need. I'm gonna get my paper out. Now, I like to take my paper out of the pad. You could totally keep it in the pad. I just like mine to be uh, out and loose. I will apply my tape because I do like that white border. Yes, you can totally paint this on a canvas. I love the effect of watercolor on a canvas. That's a good question from, from Kinkany. All right, so I have my tape. I do tend to press my tape on my shirt or on my pants to kind of like unstickify it a bit so it's not too, too sticky on my paper. So again, this is an optional step. A little bit of tape around the edges. Thanks so much for joining me from Australia. That's super cool. It must be, it must be tomorrow. It must be Friday where you are. We're still on Thursday night, but don't tell me any spoilers. <laughs> Leave a bit of tape here. Yeah, I can't believe in... Uh, well, I've been with Artist Palette for three years now. We've done 12 butts paintings over that time span. And the ideas for butt paintings are endless, so there will be more in the series. Okay, get your pencil, get your eraser. If I go a little fast for you, you can, of course, hit pause. You can erase, adjust as you go along. So what do we have here? We have a cauldron. We'll start with that. And then we have many different butts there. And you could change up the positions. You could change up the colors. If you want to include, let's say, two ghosts and only one cat. And uh, what else goes with the theme? Uh, a bat. I don't know how you would put a butt on a bat, but you could add that. What about um, two witches or three witches around the cauldron? You can literally change up anything you want, anywhere. Um, what else could be cool? Like I'm thinking like vampire, Frankenstein, those kind of Halloween characters, but how would you make it like, you know, for sure that you're looking at a vampire's butt, you know, it's not as distinctive Frankenstein's butt. I thought a witch would be the most distinctive bottom half. <laughs> Let's get, I've got this plate here that I could use to trace a circle for a cauldron. Um, and I have a nice big, look how big that cauldron is. It's taking up most of the background. 
right here, but I'm going to make it flat on the top. So let's see here. Here's my uh, maybe here, like a little bit is going off the page. Give that a bit of a trace. And then I do want to have like a sort of a flat top. Here or uh, maybe a little lower. Is that perfectly straight? No, that's okay. I'm going to erase, adjust, do what needs to be done. Okay. Yeah, so sort of a most of a circle with a flat top for my cauldron. But yeah, any any size circle could be smaller, could be bigger. There's so many different cauldrons out there. Flat top. But again, most of this is getting covered up. It's background. Flat top there. I'll give it a little bit of a lip. So another line. Something like that. Kind of look like a fishbowl. There's so much light here. Too much light. Get out of here. Yeah, sort of looks like a fishbowl at this point. All right, I think we should start with the um, the witch's butt is, is my first thought. But if you want to do something completely different, go ahead, sketch it out. So for my witch's booty, I am going to draw two circles just to get that booty shape. And my witch is quite tall, so her booty is above the cauldron as it were so i'm going to draw literally two circles sketchy messy they don't have to be perfect we're we're going to draw a series of circles and sausage shapes to get these legs in here so that'll be the booty area and so your thigh is an extension of your butt cheek. So from this circle, this is her thigh. And she's got like a bent leg and a straight leg. But that's just me. So this is like a, a big... Um, sausage shape, or you could call that like a baby carrot shape, if you know what I mean. And then her other um, butt cheek circle. This one's going straight down. Again, it's sort of like a, a baby carrot shape for the thigh. something like that. And then we have the um, calf, like the, the shin here, the calf, that meaty section there. This one's like the rear view. This is like sort of the side view leg. The legs are different. So on this one, I'm going to have the knee like that. And then you want to really bulge out, you know, where a calf, lots of meat there, lots of muscle. And mine are quite exaggerated legs. They're not anatomically, anatomically correct. Nope, that's fine. And then this leg is like the, the rear view, the back view. So it's gonna be bulgy on like both sides and then get thinner. See how messy my lines are? They're not perfect. When we outline them with the pen, that's where we can really fine tune the shape. And then, um, you know, after the ankle comes the heel. So here's our ankles, our skinny ankles. Let's draw a circle for each heel. Little circle the heel, like the rear view of the heel. 
but I will also put a circle here. For the other heel. And I've got her in some purple pumps, cute purple pumps. If you prefer maybe a, a wedge heel or some kind of a boot, you could totally do that. I'm going to give her some quite tall stiletto like heels. So this one's the, the back view. So you just see it going straight down. And then you would see sort of the rest of the foot kind of like a rounded triangle shape right here. Kitten83's comment about the ghost having a booty. Totally. That is one big booty. Okay, so we've got sort of that rounded triangle. That's the part of the foot that's facing away from us. But this foot is, you know, profile view, I would say. So this is the heel. And we want it to come maybe like this. We want a very nice tall stiletto heel. And I'm really exaggerating this foot a lot. You could give her, oh, you could give her witchy, pointy, like pointy boots would be so cute too. Something like that. The shoe itself is going to come back like this. And I'll hold this up a little closer for you. Where are we at? If you wanted to maybe like pause your screen, pause on this screenshot as you adjust your shoes, something like that. Doesn't have to be exactly like that. Give her some chunky boots. Those would be cute too. So she's got some, some muscle on her. She's got some. And then we, we dress her. We don't want her to be naked. So give her a bit of a waist and give her a bit of a skirt. So I'm gonna have sort of like a pleaty skirt. Um, let's tidy up some lines here. So anything sort of like crossing her, this cauldron right here, this is kind of extra lines we don't really need. Just tidy up some of these overlapping lines. <sighs> Oh yeah, it looks like a naked woman in heels. But we're gonna keep some of the some of the curves of the butt. Oh yeah, there we go. But we want a pleated skirt. So I'm gonna draw one, two, three, four or five pleats here. So let's say this is quite a mini skirt. Let's go right here. Make a curvy shape. This is one of the pleats. Here's another. So this is sort of like the bottom edge. I'll do, yeah, I'll do four. These little curves will be the pleats. And then from each of these curvy shapes kind of go up, up. Sort of looks like a cheerleading type skirt. or any kind of skirt, maybe like a raggedy, ripped edge. And then between the gaps, just do a line sort of a little higher, curve it. And I can tidy up, I can tidy some extra lines that I don't need.
yeah, so curve, a line coming up from each of those ends and then in between a little curve, curve, curve. And then you get the impression of up and down pleats. Yeah, and I keep some of these, some of these butt lines in here to show. Something like that. Yeah, it could, you could put a pattern on this. You could have maybe like a fashionable belt, maybe something along the edge you could draw, but I'm just gonna keep it just like that. That's looking good. Now, um, yes, her tights have stripes on them, but we don't need to draw that all out with the pencil. We'll do that with the pen directly and save a little time here. Okay, let's go with maybe the cat. Let's do this cat that's kind of hanging out with us. Where will we go? Let's go right. If you're not done the skirt and the witch area, just, you know, set the playback back, hit pause. Let's do a little cat hanging over the edge of the cauldron. Let's see. Nice and big, a big curvy shape of his rump. And yours could be smaller, it could be bigger, it could be closer to the witch, it could be further from the witch. Just a big round shape like that. And he's going to have two legs. Cats have quite big thighs, I guess you could call them. Two legs getting thin. And then little paws. Something like that. I will erase sort of these cauldron lines that are sort of unnecessary. Something like that. And I try to make the two legs sort of the same shape and size. Just good practice. And he's got a tail. It could be a, a slim tail like that, a very fluffy tail. Um, it could curve over like mine is or, or do whatever you want with the tail. And you could do different um, colorations on your cat. I'm going to do sort of black with a little white, but yours could be tabby, calico, something like that. And I mean, I could put a little, let's call it a little asterisk, <laughs> a little asterisk for the, the butthole. <laughs> and a head. So he's sort of like looking over his shoulder. There's not really a whole lot of neck showing there. So I would go with like a oval, oval head kind of looking over his shoulder. And then you could add ears, any kind of ears, pointy ones, rounded ones, could even be Scottish fold ears, whatever you feel like. I added sort of like um, fuzzy, furry cheeks, very cartoony. Big eyes, like an arch. And sort of like lines under those arches, like he's like really smiling really big. So his cheeks are kind of bulging up, his little cheeks. Triangle nose, of course, a little smile. But don't, don't, 
spend too much time adding detail to his face because we will add that detail with the pen. Yeah, so there's sort of the basic shape of where the cat's butt will be. Let's do, let's do the ghost. Yeah, I think I'll do the ghost next. If you're still working on your cat, just, you know, hit pause and work on that a little bit longer. Let's do my ghosty. Any shape ghost, right? They're formless. I mean, this one just looks like someone's wearing a bed sheet. But I will put in a nice round booty. And yep, yeah, his ghosty robes just go right to the ground. in any, any manner that you want. He could have like a cute smiling face like that. He could have like more of a scarier face, but I'm making it sort of on an angle. I think the angle makes it kind of coy. Like he's looking over his shoulder at you. <laughs> yeah, you could do like a more scary face, but I think that's that's a cute little face. Got a booty there. <laughs> it's a little, <laughs> it's a little high on this particular ghost. Do I want to move it down? Mine's a little bit high up. But that is the beauty of an eraser. Move, adjust anything you want, anytime. There, he's even got like a little bit of like butt cleavage, if you could call it that. <laughs> okay, I think that's better with his butt a little lower. Don't want him to have a high bum. Okay, let's do, 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 let's do the big, I'll do like my bigger pumpkin with the cat butt in it. And you might have, maybe you have less room on yours than I do. Maybe you want to put like this cat in the pumpkin like here and then a small pumpkin here. Maybe you have less room here. You can move things around to fit. I'll do a big, big old pumpkin with a cat butt coming out of it any shape pumpkin if you have less room and you want to do more of a more of a vertical pumpkin than a wide pumpkin you could do that mine's quite uh quite wide because i have a lot of room to like use up over here something big nice big oval i will erase that cauldron line clean that up a little um, like an opening in the pumpkin. Semi, semi-circle opening where the cat will be sticking up out of. Look at him. He's most of his body's in the pumpkin. So just his butt is sticking up. A tail. Mine's kind of curling over, but it could be oh anything. Let's go, I'm gonna go this way, just to be different. Cat tail, erase, adjust as needed. He's got his legs and feet kind of coming out of the pumpkin. I did them at like an angle. I like that they're kind of like angle not like straight I don't it just kind of looks like he's like maybe struggling and how am I gonna get out of here bigger on the the end where the little toe beans are gonna be there's gonna be some toe beans 
So this is a little bit wider, wider there. There we go. Uh, yeah, a dog, a poochie, for sure. You could put a dog, a dog butt. That'd be hilarious. Anything. Make it, make it your own. Make it your, your world. Anything you want. So there's sort of the basics of the cat. Like, I'm not going to draw the cat's uh, little toe beans yet. Um, I mean, I could segment up this pumpkin a little bit. Just turn the pumpkin into like three, four, five segments. But we'll, we'll make some more details when we add the pen. Okay, I mean, there's a little asterisk <laughs> for the butthole. All right, we're almost there. Let's do, um, let's do this little spider. I've got a little big butted spider dangling here just to take up some of this negative space. Big spidery butt. Like a circle with a little pointy tip. And then I've got like a, so that's like the, the butt, the thorax, what is it? Head, thorax, abdomen. How does that work in, in the insect world? Did a smaller circle or oval and then an even smaller one for a little bitty head. And I gave him little pinchers, him or her, little pinchers. And of course, eight legs, four on each side. Um, I'll show this a little closer. So there's my spider's legs, segmented legs, thin. Like two going up and then the rest going down. But that's just me. You can have your legs however you like. And I've got all my legs coming out of that middle, middle portion. Again. And that's a little lopsided. I'll erase and adjust to make it more symmetrical. Close enough. I've got it just dangling by one thread to the to the top. And I've got sort of that um, hourglass shape on the butt there. And that's all we need to do for the spider. And then the last thing we'll sketch in here is the the bumpkin, the bum pumpkin. If you have some room here, maybe you don't have as much room left. Maybe your, your ghost is closer in or your cat is bigger. If you have room for a little bumpkin or something else, what else could you put in this gap that has a butt? stem and that's that's all we need to do with our pencil we're going to work on our pencil
pen next, and it's a really easy scribble style. You'll see. It's fun. It's not serious. All right. So, yeah, if there's still, like, a couple of things that you wanted to work on, erase, adjust, move around, uh, just hit pause and then catch up with us a little bit later. And we're going to erase the pencil later, too, after we do some pen. I'm going to use the Sharpie pen. Um, yeah, my classic Chris Scribble style. Um, it's so forgiving. You could even, like, say you're drawing and you accidentally drop your pen. And you're like, oh, no, it's ruined. It's not ruined. Like, look, all these, like, I dropped it on purpose. There's some lines. It's okay. No one will notice those. Scribble style. Let's look at some very scribbly parts. Look at this down here. All that scribble gives us nice shading. Even, like, the straight edge of her leg. It's not perfectly straight. It's got all these extra lines. Scribbly in here for extra shading. Scribbly, scribbly. Look at those scribbles. Look over here. The whole thing is kind of kind of messy. Everything has like at least a double line, if not triple lines. Yeah. And then even like the very edge edge, like near the tape. I went all the way around with a little bit of extra scribble all the way around. You're going to love it. All right. Let's put you right there. Okay. Where do we want to start? I think I will start sort of uh, where we started before. Let's do the witch butt outline. And I literally want you to just let go. Let your wrist loose. Don't worry about following all the pencil lines that you made. You can stray. You can go outside the lines. You could emphasize that butt a little bit. And I'm going to go around twice, if not three times. And just keep it loose. So I'll hold this up. Look at that. I didn't perfectly follow the pencil lines. That's okay. Sometimes my lines don't even match up with each other. Gaps are fine. Like, I could even just, like, close my eyes. Like, literally close my eyes and just be like, oh, is this where the line is? I don't know. That's fine. It's okay. We're going to add so many other lines that that's not going to matter. There we go. Go around maybe three times. All right, there we go. Skirt's done. I'll do her legs. So following those guidelines that we made, give her some nice meaty calves. It's okay if her legs are, you know, chunkier. We embrace all body types here. You could give her like the hint of ankles too. Like, you know how your ankle kind of bulges out like right there or this little sort of a semicircle shape there. Give her some witchy heels, pointy toe or not.
You could give her shoes details, like maybe some seams or buckles or stitching. My shoes have sort of like a pointy, pointy back, the very back of the heel, kind of a point. But that's just me. Something like that. Yeah, my legs are all scribbly, and that's fine. That's okay. Um, I will give her stripy tights, but you could do fishnet, um, maybe like a spiderweb pattern, um, big polka dots in Halloween colors, uh, checker, like black and white checker or orange and black checker would be okay. If you are going to do stripes, make your stripes a little bit curved. Everything's a little curved to show that um, her leg has form. It has mass. It's a rounded object. So I'm going to start, I'll probably start near the knee. Knee, yeah, somewhere around there. A little bit of a, a little bit of a curvy dip down. And I'm going to do sort of like even spacing on my stripes, but you don't have to. You could be like thick, thin, Curve it, follow the, the direction of the leg. And my stripes are messy, gappy, not perfectly spaced out, but in the ballpark. That's all we're going for here. But just that little bit of a dip automatically starts to give it some, some form. That's pretty good, yes. Ooh, black and white would be a good color too, instead of like the two greens, black and white. Hmm, interesting. Um, yeah, and like, you know, here's like a line that went, you know, beyond where it was supposed to be. That's okay. I'm not going to worry about that. No one's going to notice it. Welcome to Erin that looks like just joined us. You can draw this good. We're walking you through all the steps. You can even put the playback all the way back to the beginning, even at this point. And start from the beginning with us. All right. Yeah, I'm happy with the witch. Um, we will add some more shading scribbles in a bit. Let's get all the other things outlined. Get your cat. Um, if you want more of a long haired cat, you can make the edges of your cat more shaggy. I think I'm going for like a short haired cat in this particular case. And then at the bottom of the feet, I will add the, like the pad of the foot, the little toe beans. So like an oval. And then I did three toe beans. One, two, three. Oval. One, two, three. And then when I outline around the foot, I'll sort of go around the toe beans to give it a little bit more shape. around the beans. Yeah, so it's a little pause. I mean, one looks bigger than the other. I'm not worried about it. But I gave them a little bit of a bean outline there. Thank you. 
him a sweet little cartoony face. Um, you could give him like a couple of whiskers. I've got three whiskers on each side. I also did a couple little dots on his face. But that's up to you. Give him some ear hairs. Oh yeah, every animal needs ear hairs sprouting out. I might, um, I think I'm gonna color in his eyes with the pen while I'm here. That'll save me painting it, but I'll leave a little bit of white in his eye as a highlight. Why not? It's such a small thing to just color in the eye. Yeah, that's kind of cute. Oh, the little uh, asterisk. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah, if you want to add other markings on your cat, um, stripes, patches, I might do a line where I want the black and the white kind of separations to be so that he's got some socks on his feet and he's got like a white tip tail but that's not 100% necessary. You don't have to do that. That's kind of cute. What else? Let's do my little ghosty face. And my ghost. Um, yeah, again, I'll probably color in the eyes black while I'm here. Give him a little smile or give him like a evil scowl. That's pretty funny. Do my ghosty outline, messy. like that. I'll do some extra um, wrinkles, I guess. Folds. A couple of those. And would you believe that like this version is a scaled down booty? The original sketch I had, his booty was even bigger. And then my husband said, that's too much. <laughs> it's still a little much. Okay, that's good for now. A couple of creases there. We will add some more shading to him in a moment. Let me do, yeah, I'll do this pumpkin, this pumpkin. We'll kind of make our way over there. I like pumpkin stems with a bit of texture, not just like a straight pumpkin stem. I like a little something. Yeah, that's quite a bootylicious pumpkin. Let's do my other cat. Same thing if you want it to be more shaggy instead of like a short haired or if you're doing a dog. Yeah, make it more shaggy. And I'll do the same with the cat's feet. I'll do sort of the foot pad and some beans.
do some squiggles. These will be sort of part of the stripes or not. You don't have to have stripies. Just like that. Um, yeah, pretty good. Maybe a little on the foot. But I'll add some stripes with the paint itself. So getting there, getting there. We're almost there. Um, spider and I guess cauldron. Here's my little spider guy or gal. I mean, my spider is less scribbly than maybe some of the other areas, just because the legs are so fine. You kind of, you kind of have to do it a little bit more neat, but still not perfect. Nope. Yeah, something like that. Make it a little bit scribblier just to kind of go with the theme. Mess it up on purpose. Spider, yeah. Um, and then just the cauldron, whatever is left of the cauldron in the background. That was the first thing we drew with the plate tracing, but not a lot of it's left at the end. Or maybe maybe more of yours is visible than mine. A little bit down here. There's a little bit over here. Mostly covered up. Little bits of the cauldron. <clears throat> And that looks good, like on its own. You could totally just start filling that in with watercolors from this point. But I like to add a little bit more shading with scribbles. All right, so in my world, in this world, I'm imagining my light source is coming from the top left. If the sun or maybe the moon, oh yes, the moon. If the moon was shining from this direction, the tops and the left sides of things would be brighter and the right side of things and the bottoms of things would be darker. So that's why on her legs, let's say, it's darker along the right side, right side of her leg right side of her behind of the skirt pleats um, this pumpkin the right side along here and all these little creases and along the bottom so this one the bottom bottom and the right side underneath the little cheeks there the right side under that little lip yeah anywhere you think it would be a little darker because this this moonlight isn't hitting it as as much. Extra scribbles. So yeah, let's go with go with the legs to start. And I literally just scribble. It could be zigzaggy scribbles. It could be circle scribbles. Just keep it wild and loose. And like some of my scribbles are going out of the shape. And now her leg looks even bumpier than it was before. That's fine. No one's gonna care. We're gonna fill it in with paint anyway. Anywhere it would be dark, like under the skirt would cast a little shadow, right? If you're having trouble like loosening it up, just hold your pen like further back. If you're if you're holding your pen like right at the nib, that's that's too controlled, too precise. Loosen up, hold it further back, and just kind of go wild. There you go, like that, that line went out, that line went out, that one, that one, it's fine. 
There we go. I'm going to do sort of like the in between the pleats, a little bit darker, right? Hidden from the light, the um, rear end over here on the right side, bottom of the skirt, right side of the torso. Oh yeah, this, this cheek would cast a shadow for sure, right along here. Even just like a few, if you have some wild lines that, oh, you dropped your pen or it doesn't matter. The kid kid came over, grabbed your pen and went like this. Oh, it's not a big deal. Even over here. Oh, oh, over here. Oops, whoops. Oh, oh no. It's not a problem. And just continue wherever. So right side of the cauldron. Underside. Right side of the shoes, right side of the pumpkin. Any nooks and crannies. Creases of the pumpkin. Here. The cat's feet, the cat's bum, the cat's tail, all the right sides of these things. And I'm not even really like thinking about it. I'm just kind of doing it. My brain is kind of on autopilot. My hand is kind of doing all these scribbles just mindlessly, whatever looks good. And you can sort of start it, start to see it like come to life. So like, look at, okay, look at that half. <laughs> it looks more popping than this half. It looked kind of flat there, right? But this is more popping out the page. Where else? This guy, yes. Even like, like the cat itself would maybe have a shadow on the cauldron. Extra scribbles. The ghost. Oh, this right side, the bottom, these creases, these folds, extra scribbly. Under the cheeks. scribble in one spot the darker it becomes so if you really want to emphasize something is like a really deep crevice just scribble extra long on that spot um yeah the replay will be on our channel forever artist palette durham region on youtube this will be here forever. You can also check out all the other butt series. There's 11 others um, on the uh, on the channel. There's playlists, right? This would be Chris's butt series playlist. And all of them are there. Um, what do I want on his face? Maybe a little bit on my spider, a little bit. He's going to be a black spider anyway. 
Where else? Where else? Where else? Oh, the shoes, a little bit on the shoes. It's okay if some of the things start to sort of blur and blend together. Like you can't tell where the pumpkin is versus where's the shoe. It's kind of all a scribbly mess, but the colors when we paint this will help kind of separate those items. Oh yeah. I'm happy with that. And you could keep scribbling for much longer get some really nice dark shadows. Uh, but I think we can add some of that nice darkness with paint. I think, mm -hmm, I think the last thing I wanna do scribble is like a scribbly edge. So right, right along my tape, I'm gonna draw a line just to edge the whole thing, but then I'll scribble along it too. So right along there, this bit's optional. but then I'm going to scribble it up. Scribble along the edge. Um, I guess you could make even like a spider web situation in the corner or something. Instead of scribble, make an actual spider pattern. Spider web. Scribbly edge to any degree, if at all. There we go. I'll just frame it nicely. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So there we go. We made that drawing in, I'd say, a little under an hour, because I was yakking a bunch at the at the start. And then we are going to paint it, fill it in, as if we're doing a um, coloring page but you are the one who designs the coloring page. I will erase, do a quick erase, any extra pencil lines that didn't get covered. Tidies it up a little bit. We are going to like paint everything. So those lines would get covered, but I just like to erase anyway. Tidies it up a little, and you might find an area that you, you know, forgot to do the pen. And you just erase the pencil, and then you realize something's missing. Oh, no. Okay, that looks pretty good. I hate those bits. Eraser bits are everywhere. Lovely. So there we are. We're halfway there. Um, I want to take a moment to share with you some upcoming events. You guys can still be kind of fine tuning as you check out these upcoming events with me. If you've been enjoying uh, my teaching style and my art style, kind of loose, you know, doesn't matter if you go outside the lines, you'll hear that a lot from me. So uh, generally I teach every Thursday. So next Thursday, I think you'll like this a lot. If you've been enjoying this particular method, um, next Thursday, I'm gonna teach, I called it 
Sipping My Pumpkin Spice. It is a pen drawing and it's the scribble style. Look at that, all scribbles. But we're gonna take it like up a notch and get some really black, dark scribbles. So I'll use the same kind of pen I'm using today. You will get an outline to help you out, give you a bit of a head start on that one. This is a paid event. Tickets on our website, artistpalettedurham.com. Um, and if you can't make the live event, everyone who gets a ticket gets also the full recording to do on your own time. So it's okay if you can't make the actual live event. So that's next Thursday, uh, the 19th. The following Thursday, two weeks from today, we're getting really close to uh, Halloween at that point. If you're enjoying this, you're going to enjoy this one too. And I called this one Nocturnal Gnomes. This one's also a paid event. Tickets on the website. Um, we're going to do the same thing. Draw freehand the gnomes and the pumpkins. Fill it in with watercolors. So that's Nocturnal Gnomes, October 26th, just before Halloween. And then we're already into November. Let me show you some November stuff. Um, let me show you a paid one and then I'll show you a free one. November 2nd is the, oh, where is he? There he is. He's got three scarves on because he's a llama. He's got a big neck. I called it, it's scarf season. This one's just watercolor, so we don't need the pens for that one. Join me November 2nd, tickets on the website. Let me show you the free one in November. Appropriately, it is uh, some poppies. Lately, I've been experimenting with 3D projects. This is paper flowers, poppies in this case. This one's going to be free right here on YouTube Live November 9th, so two days before Remembrance Day. The poppies in my case were made from sheet music, but you can use regular computer paper to make the poppies. So I did it on a little canvas, but you could do it on maybe some sturdy paper. Free November 2nd. Join me right here. Um, and you can even go on the website. That free event will be on the website. Um, get a Click on it. Get a free ticket so that you're reminded when that one goes live. Now, I have a sneak peek. This is the last one I'll show you before we continue with the painting here. This is such a sneak peek. Not even um, Vera and Liesel, the owners of Artist Palette Durham Region, they haven't even seen this yet. It's such a sneak peek because I just finished it. I haven't even given it a title. That's how new it is. So here it is, two foxes kind of curled up. I haven't decided on a title, something to do with maybe the change of the seasons, fall into winter, I don't know. Something with seasons change. Um, this one is, again, pen and watercolor. I just thought it was a really cute image and I wanted to get it out of my brain and onto paper and it turned out, I think, pretty good. Because, yeah, right around, um, like, mid-November is where it's, like, starting to change from, like, fall to, like, cooler, winterier. So I thought that would be interesting for mid-November. All right, let's get back to the painting. So get your paints in here. Where am I going to put this? Let's put that here for now. Get your water, brushes. Where's my other one? any colors anywhere literally if you want to do um, a fully black cat if you want to do um, purple cauldron do you want to do an orange ghost do it I would love to see that version I'm gonna do let's start with a big area her skirt is quite a nice big area I'll probably use sort of a medium-ish brush here any color of purple, any any color at all, any color at all. Get your brush wet, get your paint wet. I like to kind of bring my paint into the lid, act as a little bit of a palette to mix some extra water in there. 
If you've never worked with watercolors, it is literally the consistency of, of juice. Like we're painting with juice. It's, it's see-through. So I could paint right on these lines and you can still perfectly see those lines. Yeah, it's not like acrylic. Acrylic is thick and opaque. This is thin, see-through. So I'm gonna do purple on her uh, butt, but I'm gonna have some areas that are a bit lighter, very watery, and then some that are a little darker. So again, we're imagining our light is coming from the top left. So maybe this portion of her skirt, very watery right in here, but then maybe back here, a little darker, but still watery. And again, it's okay to go outside the lines. It's even okay to have little white um, gaps. Sometimes in my paintings, I don't fully fill in the shape properly and there's like white gaps. Not a problem. You will get different um, shapes forming as your watercolor paint dries. We call them blooms or cauliflowers. So let's look at here. Yeah, as this area dried, just like some weird shapes, darker, lighter areas formed. Yeah, especially in the cauldron, blobby, hard edges. And that's that's all part of it. Oh yeah, like right here, this bit of orange dried a little bit, like different little dark patch. Oh yeah, over here, it's kind of a light shape. It's not, it's not a mistake, it's part of watercolor. Let's go a little bit more dark in here. Yeah, you can put some darker purple in like sort of the, the gaps. And watercolor, you can't always fully control it where, it, where it goes, where it ends up. You can do a little bit of darker on the sort of the curve of the butt but it's going to sort of move and flow and just kind of do whatever it wants. Something like that. So yeah, I've got it sort of darker over here, lighter towards the, towards the light source. That's pretty good. I'll let it dry like that. While I have purple on the brush, if there's anywhere else that you wanna do purples, such as the shoes, do it now. It's on the brush, might as well. Purple shoes, it's a little dark. If ever I like accidentally blob it on like too dark, I just rinse this off right away, get some water, spread it out, dilute it, spread it. Some nice purple shoes. And I'll take a, like a little bit darker purple and do maybe along the right side of things, the underside, the bottom, let's say. Anywhere that would be a little bit shaded but it's really subtle. It's pretty subtle. These shoes are pretty small. You can also lift paint away to a degree. So get my brush wet, wipe off my brush. I could kind of absorb some of the wet paint in my brush, wipe it off. I can absorb some of it, lift it away, take it away, wipe it. So if you did want to kind of highlight, have a lighter side, you just kind of rub it, absorb it, put on your paper towel, soak up some more. But it's again, very subtle. That's pretty good, yeah. And like, it is starting to dry. Weird shapes are happening that I can't control and I, and I want to, like this shape here. What is that? What is this? Those are fine. 
Is there anywhere else that you want some purple? Do it now. Otherwise, give your brush a little rinse. All right, the thing with watercolor, you kind of want to bounce around to different areas so that wet things aren't touching other wet things. I'm not going to do her tights right now because it would touch the wet skirt. It would touch the wet shoes. So let's save the tights for a few minutes from now. Let's do, let's do a pumpkin or two. Let's do some orange. If you have a variety of oranges to choose from, choose a lighter, yellowier orange. If you only say have one color of orange in your lid or palette, mix some orange and yellow together and make a lighter orange because we're going to shadow the orange with darker orange. So we want to start with a lighter orange. How many times will I say orange? At least three more. Paint your pumpkins orange. Very watery, still watery, see-through. Lots of water. Again, it's okay to go outside the lines. Okay, there's some watery orange. And then you can grab either a darker shade of orange or maybe just straight up red. I'm gonna go with this kind of reddish orangish. And I'm gonna dab in some of this darker orange or reddish orange, sort of where the where the darker scribbles are. So in that crack along the bottom here, dab it into the wet along the right side, because that's the shadow side. And this darker orange might flow to places that you didn't mean for it to go, but that's okay. Maybe in some of these like cracks or creases, a little dab, a little dab along the crack or crease. Yeah, we'll see what that looks like when it dries. Like, okay, well, if I hold it really close, you can start to see it sort of spreading, kind of has a feathered edge and that's fine. That's okay. I'm going to do that again, uh, but over here on the other pumpkin, light orange to start, very watery. Nice and bright. What's the date? The 12th. Okay, so like more than two weeks till Halloween. Still loads of time to figure out your Halloween costumes. I am going to, well, I always, I always dress as a pirate every year. orange, light watery orange. Sometimes I even grab extra water on my brush and you could just dab, dab around some water, even over here, dab some extra water and then it'll make some interesting shapes maybe as it dries. Some of those cauliflower shapes, encourage them. And I'll dab in a little darker darker orange or red even along the creases, along the bottom, along the right side. It's going to spread. Good. Good. 
maybe a little bit sort of near the paws. Maybe the paws themselves cast a little shadow on the pumpkin itself, maybe a little bit right there. Mm, I love the, the purple and orange combination together and green. It really like just screams Halloween to me, those colors. Yeah, what else is orange in here? Not, well, I mean the cat, the cat's got some orange, but we'll do that after. So that's good on the orange for now. <clears throat> Let's do, I think I'm going to do the, this cat, because again, I'm trying to avoid wet areas. So I'm just bouncing around here. I'm going to do this cat blackish grayish or whatever color scheme uh, you want to do. Yeah, gray. I would call him gray more than black. So I'm going to do like a medium gray and then I'll get some darker gray to kind of emphasize the edges in the dark shadowy bits, this guy here. Um, but most sets of watercolors don't have a, a gray specifically. You use the black and just water it down. So get a little black in your mixing area. Lots of water. Welcome to Alice. Yeah, this is live right now, but you are able to put the playback all the way back to the beginning. So you can start right from the beginning with us. And yes, we did do the drawing freehand. No outline necessary. Yeah, test out your gray. And you can make it darker or lighter as needed. That's a little light for me. I'll get it a little darker. That's pretty good. Um, I'll leave the tail tip white. I'll leave his little sock feet white. But I'll do the rest of him this sort of medium gray. Um, oh, yeah, a little bit on the face. I left some white on the face. Or any kind of markings you want to do. gray. I just will avoid sort of the muzzle area of him. So I left some of his face white, tail tips white, feet are white, and then I'll get a little bit darker gray, if not black, and just dab some in. Emphasize his thighs. Could do a little bit on the tail, like the right side of the tail. A little bit by the shoulder. But again, it's going to spread and kind of do whatever it wants to do. I want a little bit, I was thinking about sort of making the little asterisk darker, but no, I'm going to leave that light. Yeah, I think that's better. All right, so we've got some of that. I will also do my spider, yes. I'll do my spider while I have this black gray thing going. Where's my spider? Here he is. So again, the light source will be on the left side. So I left that kind of like untouched, just white along the left. 
and darker on the right side of his body. So I literally leave a strip of white untouched on the left and just black, black, black on the right. Let's hold it up a little bit. So on the very edge on the left, a strip of white. Strip of white on the body, head, and then gray for the rest. And then I just took some very dark black along the right. I'll do his little, I'll do his little legs. Now I'm still using my medium brush because it has a pointy tip. But if you need to go to a smaller brush to get these little legs, go for it. And again, it's okay to go outside the lines. No one's going to see. There we go. I went outside the lines like five times. Where else do I want a little black? I mean, hmm, the ghost. We'll give him like very subtle shadowing, but we mostly leave the ghost white. But if you look super duper close at the ghost, he has like the barest, wateriest hints of gray. Little bits of gray. Tiny, I've got a little gray in my brush, but let me get some more water. So it's even lighter. Oh yeah. Can the camera even see how light this gray is? A little bit. Tiniest bit of gray in some of those creases. Tiny. Maybe along the, the right side here where we've got extra scribbles. Just like the lightest, lightest underneath the butt cheeks, pale, pale gray. I kind of go like sort of all the way around him and then just really water it down. Let's see. Yeah, it's so subtle. Bits of gray on the ghost. You can mostly see like where it's kind of shiny from the glare, but super subtle. Light, 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 light. Cute. Um, more gray. No, not really. I think we're good on the gray slash black for now. Oh, yeah, my skirt. My skirt and shoes are pretty dry. I think I'm going to tackle the tights. The stripy tights. Um, these are green and green. It's a pretty good co color combination. I'm thinking black and orange. You could do um, black and white. Ooh, black and red. Oh, that would be cool. Hmm. I think I'll stick with the green personally, or do I want to do something cool? Maybe 
red. I'm thinking I'm gonna try some red here. Black and red, yeah. Yeah. I just wanna make it a little different than this one. If you like the green on green look, do it. I think I'm gonna try it black and red just for funsies. I'll do my red first. Nice rich red. Get some red going. Now, to help the illusion of the legs being a rounded object, we did those curves, right? We can also help that illusion with shading. So we've already got scribbles down the back half. When I'm gonna paint this black and red tight stripes, if you make the darkest part of the stripe the part that's in the shadow, it'll help with that illusion. So I've got some red on my brush. Um, let's just start randomly right here. So if I put some red, some really rich red back here on the calf, and I'm gonna do that every other, because it's gonna be black, red, black, red, black, red. Put some more here, put it right at the very back every other stripe. And then as I, when I go to fill this in, the rest of the stripe, I'll dilute it. Uh, here. Okay, it looks weird right now. Get some water. And I'm going to fill in the rest, but dilute it lighter toward the front. And you might have to kind of dip, dip your brush, kind of soak up some of the red. Dab it off. So let's look a little closer. So if you look at those two stripes, I mean, the paint's kind of flowing too. I want it to be lighter at the front. I can kind of soak it up, take it away, and darker at the back. But it's watercolor. It's going to flow. It's going to go wherever it wants. And I'm just kind of lifting some away, taking it away. I missed a stripe, I definitely did. That's so funny. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna cover it with black anyway, so it won't be, won't be a problem to cover up my mistake with black. dab and lift it away and wipe and it gets lighter hmm yeah like the red because that's what the other painting was missing there was no red in this one really and I'll do the same for this leg I'll dab red every other stripe
I hope some of the people did other patterns on their tights. Made yours like a little bit different from mine. I want to see different compositions. There we go. So I've got my red stripes done, but I'm not going to right away do the black stripes because then it would just be smudge city, bleed city. We want to let those dry. But you can sort of start to see the sort of 3D illusion we're going for because it's lighter, darker, lighter, darker. It looks sort of rounded. And you can still, even now, kind of lift and dab away some some bits. I think I did pretty good. Okay, I think I'm going to add a coat of yellow on my this kitty. So he's going to be like a yellow and orange stripey tabby, but the first layer is yellow. Light yellow, could be yellowy orange, could be light brown. Let's get a little yellow going. Very watery. And I'll leave, yeah, I'll leave the tip of the tail white. I'll leave, um, you know, part of the foot white. Just because I like when cats have little white boots on, little socks on. Go. Just a light layer of yellow, and we'll add orange stripes in a bit. What else can we add right now? Um, yellow in the cat's eyes up here. This cat has yellow eyes. Might as well add that. Um, if your cat's head is dry enough, if it's still a little wet, don't risk the black and yellow um, bleeding. Mine is quite dry. I can do yellow eyes or green or blue or red. Give them some evil red eyes. There's some nice yellow eyes. What else is yellow? Not much else. I'm going to do the little, little small things like we need um, the toe beans to be painted, whether you want to do pink toe beans, black toe beans, something that goes with your cat color, or whatever. You can have green. Sure, I can't stop you. I do a little bit of pink. Toe beans. Pink toe beans, what about, we could do the stem, pumpkin stem, brown, green, whatever you think a pumpkin stem would look like. Um, I can do the, um, the spider's little hourglass black widow shape here, red. Red, what other little details? We could start, oh, I think need a little, little pink nose. My cat needs a pink nose or a black nose or Good. Uh, we could start on our background is what I'm thinking. A little bit of background color. Because the legs are still a little wet. And yeah, we have background and cauldron. 
Okay, my background is mostly blue. Um, you could do literally any color in the background. And then as I got like closer to the cauldron area, greeny, yellowy, as if there's some kind of potion brewing, bubbling up, magical mist rising up out of the cauldron. Um, it could be any color. It could be pinks and purples rising up out of the cauldron. Yeah. And yeah, you can see in the background, like, it's not like perfectly solid blue. There's patches that are a little lighter, a little darker. Those shapes formed, those cauliflower shapes. Um, yeah. Darker patches, lighter patches. It's not perfectly perfect. Because who is perfect? I might use, I'll probably use this guy, a bit bigger, to really fill in a big area. That just makes sense. Blue, dark, 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 blue. Could be black, could be purple, could be red. What's a nice blue? Maybe this one. Give that a try. It's a nice blue. I like that. Yep. Yeah. Let's continue that. If you do have some wet areas still, just be very careful near them. Don't let the two colors touch. And if a little bleed happens, it's not the end of the world. That's kind of nice, I think. I think this is going to be like a little bit lighter than my other version, but that's okay. And if you have like really small little tiny areas that you need to get into and your big brush just isn't good doing it for you grab your small brush don't be a hero these little bits in between the legs just because i'm doing it with my big brush doesn't mean you have to It's a little bit fiddly getting in all these little legs, but it's worth the effort. As we're filling in this background, I'd like to take the moment to just say thank you to those who uh, sent me a tip when you uh, got your free ticket. I really appreciate your support. And you know that all the tip money just goes right into more art supplies. I can't get enough art supplies. On the weekend, this weekend I'm going to go to the States. You know I'm going to visit at least at least two different art supply stores they got different stuff down there than in Canada. I want to go to Joanne for sure. And 
and Hobby Lobby, definitely. And as long as you keep making art, making more and more art, no one will ever tell you you have enough art supplies, right? I think that's that's the rule. But you got to keep making the art. There, so I've got sort of this section filled in. There's some obvious dark parts, light parts. And if you do like the look of cauliflowers, those shapes, you can even dab in a little extra water. Just dab it in there and they'll just form. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't add some green. I think a little bit of the green of the cauldron would be right here. A little bit kind of bubbling out this way. Not to where I can sort of lift off some of this blue, wipe some of it off. Throw in some green, throw in some yellow, pink, purple. There we go, there's some green. Some of that misty cauldron smoke. There we go, a little bit of green. And when that dries, it'll have some uh, interesting cauliflower shapes. Yeah, so there's some of the green kind of like, yeah, and like here, it's kind of spreading out and it's gonna spread out this way too. Do I want some yellow? I could dab some yellow in too. Dab, dab, dab. Yeah, we'll see what that looks like when it dries. Oh yeah, there's some shapes forming here. I love it. And we're gonna have bubbles too. Okay, I'm gonna keep going over here, over here. Uh, yeah, maybe some greens, yellows in here. And like all of this is dry. The cat is dry, the um, skirt, her skirt is dry. So I have no worries about colors bleeding. Let's get some green, let's get some, let's get some blue, dab in some blue. Blue, yeah, dab, dab, dab. That's kind of like a mottled, muddy mess of blues, greens. I got some yellow, a little yellow. Dab, dab, dab. Big puddle here. If you have any giant puddles, you can just dab them with a, a tissue. Okay, green.
Susan, if I see anything really cool, I'll buy two and I'll send you one. <laughs> You're not too far from me, actually. Yeah, just a little, little weekend in the States. See what's, see what's happening down there. It's been a while. I love the, the dark blue really makes, I think, all these colors here pop. Dab. A little green in the blue, little blue in the green. It's buckling, it's warping a little bit because we did such big, big areas with a lot of water. But I just, you know, bend it, bend it back. I'll flatten it later. Okay, I want to do the other alternate stripes on her stockings. I'm going to do black. I think that would be an interesting color combination, black and red. And these are all dry, so they shouldn't smudge. And I'll do the same thing where I have it darker at the uh, back to the right. And then I'll just fade it. Yeah, I'll see if there's any really good deals at uh, like Joanne or something. So yeah, if you look at this leg that's more filled in than the other leg, uh, I think you get a real sense of, of depth. Like it's a thick leg.
Do I want more? And any of these areas that we've already um, done, and maybe they dried a little bit lighter, lighter than you thought, you could always do another coat. Do a second layer to darken them, deepen them. Because I think, I think all watercolor dries a little bit lighter than you, than you think it'll look. There we go. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Those are cute. Very Halloween-y. What do you think? Green and green, red and black. And both have their merits. Okay. I think uh, cauldron. And then I'm not sure this will be dry enough for me to show you the bubbles, but the bubbles are pretty self-explanatory. I'll go over those. All right, let's do the cauldron. Browns, grays, greens, make it look kind of rusty, maybe even a little bit mossy. Maybe you want to stick with like a traditional like dark black cauldron. That will look good too. Would really set off all the colors here to have a nice dark black cauldron. I'm going to do, yeah, rusty browns. Dab in a little green, dab in a little gray, anything. Let's go with this kind of like a reddish, like a sienna. Yeah, like rusty reddish brown. We can get some of this yellowy brown. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Dab it around. And yeah, most of this other stuff over here should be pretty... Uh, dry. If you're near, say, the blue background, if you're near any wet areas, uh, just go very carefully. Don't let the wet touch the wet. But again, if a bleed happens, it's not Gonna ruin the whole thing. I found a little spot. There's a little gap down here that I should have painted blue, but I can do that in a moment. Some brown, maybe a little gray. My cauldron has at least three different browns and some gray in it. It's all different colors. You can make your cauldron darker near the bottom for that illusion of shade, shadow.
I'll dab in a little, maybe a mossy green, olive green. Something's growing on it. Hmm. Yeah, it looks earthy. I think that makes it look earthy. Let me get that little bit of blue that I forgot. This little gappy. Mm -hmm. I, I know I need to put stripes on my kitty cat. So this, this cat butt has some darker orange stripes on the yellow. Let's get some of that going. Just anything darker. It could be brown even. Brownie orange. zigzags like messy messy stripes not not tidy stripes hmm, yeah that's a little that's a little more interest on the cat Do I want more on the legs maybe I'm happy with that. I've got uh, loads of dark patches, light patches, interesting things happening here. Do you want more green? Maybe a little more green. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think it's dry enough. I could do some. Let me show you a few of the bubbles. Um, I'm going to use my paint pen. If you don't have anything like that, uh, just some dollar store white acrylic and a thin brush. And we're going to make circles for bubbles. And I've got big ones, little ones, ones that are touching each other. Um, and then I added like a little crescent shape to be like the highlight of the bubble. And then I have a couple of um, little, like a little starburst, little twinkle thing to make it seem like they're kind of shiny. I'll do a couple where I know it's safe, where I know it's dry. So on the skirt, like the skirt I know is dry. Well, maybe it would help if I got the pen going. These paint pens have to like sort of warm them up. There we go. And my bubbles are not perfectly round. Or is it dry on the cat? It's dry. I need a different pen. What do I got? Here's my brand new one. Dry. <laughs> yeah, have some big ones, some little ones, some close together, some 
uh, drifting away on top of everywhere. These bubbles just float anywhere. Yeah, mine are not perfectly circular. Do as many as you want. I went a little crazy here. I kind of focused it up at the top half, let's say, for the bubbles. And then you could do a little like, uh, a little burst, a little shiny. So it's just like a line that goes up, a line that goes down, a line that goes left and right. Maybe right here. Not too many of those. You get the idea. More bubbles. The more the merrier, I think. And then tape pull-wise. Bleeds will happen. That's fine. Um, whew. It's still pretty wet. Definitely wait as long as you can to OC. Oh, mm, that's a little, a little damp there. I'm going to have little rippies. I don't like rippies. Just go slow. But yeah, wait. Be patient. Don't be Chris. Tiny rippy forming. But it really helps tidy it up, that tape edge. See, I've got, look at this bad rip happening. No. Try the other direction. It's because I'm impatient. Let's say you do want to like gift this to someone and it has a little rippy. You could uh, get a frame with a mat board that would kind of cover up. Okay, that one wasn't too bad. Salvaged it a little bit. No, that one's going badly. It's going badly. Um, yeah, I would love to see um, some photos of your creations. Um, we have a Watercolor Lover Facebook group. Watercolor Lovers by Artist Palette Durham Region. I think the link to that is in the description down below, if I'm not mistaken. Rippy, no. Um, yeah, feel free to post this, this watercolor, any other watercolors. Um, we also have a, just a general Facebook group, artist palette, um, painting slash drawing support group. Maybe you did this tutorial in acrylics or colored pencils. That would look nice. I'd love to see it posted in that sort of general group if it's not watercolor. Okay, almost there. But yeah, I've had several little rippy areas along the way. Don't, don't be me. Wait till it's dry. There we go. I'm gonna sign it. You can sign it in watercolor, you can sign it in pen. I'm going to go with pen. I'm going to hide it in some of these little scribbles. Get your initials in there, maybe the year. There we go, right in the little corner. Um, yeah, so some wet bits still. I'm going to add some more bubbles for sure. Some interesting shapes forming. I love those. And that earthy cauldron. Super. Does anyone have any questions before I wrap up this live? The, the full video will be available immediately on our channel for rewatch. Yeah, 
Yeah, those are pretty similar. Pretty close. Any questions about maybe this one? Um, other ones that I was showing earlier? Any questions at all? Any name suggestions for my newest, what should I call this? Something about the change of the seasons or something. I don't know. I can't come up with anything more clever. All right. I don't see any questions rolling in. But you can always email us, message us. All right. Well, thank you so much for sticking it out with me, joining me this evening. I hope everyone has a, a happy Halloween, safe Halloween. And I uh, will see you on, uh, what was the date for the next one? The Poppies, November 9th. I'll be back here November 9th for the Poppies, the 3D Poppies. We'll see you then. All right, no more questions. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks so much. Take care.